Good morning and thanks to Dr. Srinivas Joshi. Greetings to my fellow faculty and to the delegates. AC Iwell's will salvage a lost back even today. Since Baron of France introduced AC Iwell for the first time in 1952, there are many designs which were introduced and the most successful of them is Kelman Quadriflex Iwell. There are contraindications with poor damage, endothelium, iridocornial angles are not good, iris support is not there, chamber is shallow, pediatric age group, we would certainly avoid AC IOLs. A constant is 2 to 3 diopters less than posterior chamber lens. Sizing is most important factor in minimizing the complications. It needs to be 1 millimeter larger than the horizontal white to white diameter. The sclerocorneal tunnel is 6 millimeters because these are PMMI holes. Iris root should not be incarcerated by the haptic loops and haptics should rest against scleral spur anterior to the iris periphery. 1% pilocarpin to constrict the pupil before insertion helps you to avoid peak pupil. Vitrectomy and peripheral iridectomy are part and parcel of implantation of an ACI wheel because of a compromised the uh, capsular bag or zonules. Most of the problems that we see is because of implanting the lens concave anterior. The lens has to be implanted convex anterior. If you look at the profile of the lens as you can see here, there is a vaulting anteriorly of the hap optics. The haptic has to be behind so that it matches with the configuration of the anterior chamber. Complications are known, increased and prolonged inflammation, glaucoma, UG8 syndrome, upside down syndrome when you've implanted the lens upside down. We have a stock of all the lenses of ACI oil. Though it is rarely used, I would rather prefer a iris clip lens, but these are definitely uh, something which is of value when you have a complicated situation. Is it accepted in the literature? Yes, as late as 2003 to 2007, there are a couple of articles. One is a meta-analysis published by the American Academy where all the three kinds of secondary eye oils are equivalent as far as results are concerned by Michael Wegener. Donaldson reported that there is no significant differences in the outcome of visual acuity and postoperative complications. And couple of studies even said that the results of ACI world is superior to any other kind of lens. So that is the uh, status where we have done a vitrectomy. Uh, we have lost the capsule uh, and uh, the lens is very carefully guided within the viscoelastic so that the uh, leading haptics go and impinge upon the anterior angle, distal angle. And uh, there are two ways of implanting it to either hold the uh, haptic and then push it or it can be very gently inserted using a T-dialer. T-dialer pushes it and each of the trailing haptic is inserted into the angle region. A tunnel of uh, 6 millimeter is essential and uh, after that I would like to implant the lens horizontally all the time so that because of squeezing action, when the lid is pressing, upper lid is pressing on the globe, it can cast tenderness for a couple of weeks time. If it is implanted vertically, the long axis is vertical. So I would always like to rotate it. I would have liked the pupil to be a little smaller than what you see here. But then uh, this is the uh, way I withdraw it from the angle region and uh, uh, very slowly position it alternatingly each haptic so that it doesn't rub against the angle region. Uh, deepen the chamber to certain extent so that uh, the a a periphery of the AC falls back from the cornea. As you are withdrawing the haptic away from the angle region, slightly lift it up so that there is no um, impinging of periphery root of the iris uh, against the haptic. So, uh, withdraw it from the angle, lift it up and release it. That's what I do. Continue doing vitrectomy. Ensure that the viscoelastic is completely removed from the eye so that post-operative pressure hike does not occur. Patient would certainly need anti-inflammatory drugs for a longer time after the surgery. And uh, there's another case where uh, 
soon after a couple of weeks time you notice the lens is not stable in the eye patient already had undergone vitrectomy during the primary procedure and uh, the lens is not well supported by the capsular uh, you know in the sulcus area it's decentered so uh, it's a scleroconial tunnel a short scleral tunnel it's very difficult to open the sclera even at few weeks after the surgery uh, lignocaine into the anterior chamber 1% to anesthetize is done under topical otherwise the lens is uh, rotated into the anterior chamber under the protection of viscoelastic this is a pc lens um, bring it to the anterior chamber there is no vitreous uh, in the vicinity because of uh, the vitrectomy done during the primary surgery repeated injection of visco is very important take take your own time and uh, put pull the both the haptics out of the uh, posterior chamber into the anterior chamber and then uh, bring it in line with the tunnel and then explant it by holding with uh, the lens holding forceps a kelman forceps is of no use here it has to be a lens holding forceps as you can see here hold it up and then pull it out of the eye this lens uh, as i said the convexity of the haptic optic should be anterior uh, so that it the haptics don't press on the angle region the trailing haptic is positioned in the angle region now and the viscoelastic in the anterior chamber is repeatedly infused Visco is aspirated completely. If necessary, vitrectomy could be done even here when there is in case vitreous presence. Sizing is important. As you can see, the pupil should be round and it should not be peaked towards the haptics. By carefully planning the surgery, we can avoid uh, endothelial damage, prolonged inflammation, UGH syndrome, and uh, secondary glaucoma in such cases. In uh, certain special situations, ACIOL can certainly be an alternative to the iris clip or scleral fixation lenses. Thank you.